Windows 11 has already leaked all over the internet and so far, based on what I'm seeing in this new update, Apple's upcoming M1X Macs and future even more powerful Macs are going to be completely free to reign as the kings of the computer market. Now before I get into explaining exactly what I mean by using a brand new WWDC 2021 developer video that explains the insane advantages of Apple's chip technology, I want to quickly show you guys the disappointment that is Windows 11. As you can see, Windows 11 has a new design with a bunch of new icons that look modern, a new taskbar with centered apps, rounded corners on all the apps, and a new dark mode which definitely looks nice. And I've got to admit, the new wallpapers look absolutely amazing as well as the new start menu that's much improved compared to the old one. But look what happens when we dig a little bit deeper. All of the settings and apps look essentially identical to how they looked in Windows 10. And looking at the file explorer, it's literally a copy except with new icons. So what's worrying people is the possibility that Windows 11 is just a reskin, where they freshened up the look of the UI and the icons and called it good. Like for example, Tom Warren showed that all of the old Windows stuff is still there within Windows 11, like the same command prompt, task manager, and a basically identical control panel. Even more crazy, the computer management program is still still using decade-old icons from Windows XP. So Dylan, an Apple developer on Twitter, decided to install Windows 11 and check it out for himself. And what he ultimately confirmed was that the code base is essentially identical to the one from Windows 10, even containing this dialog box that hasn't been updated in about 30 years, which is unbelievable. This is a massive problem because we all know that the current version of Windows supports so much outdated hardware and software that the extra overhead actually slows down the performance of modern computers. And since Windows 11 uses the same old code base, this is horrible news for Windows laptop makers since there won't be any major speed improvements to give them a much needed boost to compete with Apple's new M1 Max that are extremely well optimized. For example, DP Review recently put the M1 iMac priced at $1900 against a much more expensive $2900 Razer Blade 15 Advanced with an 8 core i7 CPU, an insane RTX 3080 GPU with 16 gigs of VRAM and 32 gigs of system RAM which is two times more than the M1 iMac has. And if you compare the graphics performance, the RTX 3080 is around five to six times faster than the M1 MacBook Pro's eight core GPU. So based on that massive difference, you'd expect the Razer to easily wipe the floor with the M1 in terms of something very graphics dependent like video editing especially since it has double the system RAM. And not only that, but they tested Premiere Pro, which is actually running on the M1 Mac using a brand new Apple Silicon beta version compared to a fully optimized native version on the Razer Blade. But shockingly, the M1 Mac is somehow able to outperform the Razer in every single test, from exporting an H.264, H.265, a master file, and even processing warp stabilization, which makes no sense at all if you consider the difference in graphics performance. And then watch what happens when we introduce the completely optimized Final Cut Pro into the mix. The M1 Mac is able to finish all of the tests in almost half the time, absolutely destroying the Razer Blade. This is insane because you're comparing a $1,900 M1 iMac to a $2,900 Razer Blade 15 laptop. And what makes it even better is the fact that the M1 iMac performs identically to the M1 MacBook Pro, which you can get for even less, either $1,500 or $1,700, depending on the storage. These results don't really make sense at all, especially for the Premiere Pro tests, which are obviously favoring the Windows laptop. So the main question that we have to answer is, how in the world is Apple pulling this off? Well, the answer is Apple's absolute obsession with optimization, which they've revealed in this brand new WWDC 2021 developer video, explaining how to optimize video editing apps for Apple Silicon chips like the M1. But before I get into the incredible revelation shown in that video, I want to go over some very important details about Apple Silicon from last year's WWDC developer videos. 
First off, a lot of people have the false belief that the 8-core GPU doesn't have any dedicated RAM like the VRAM, and instead relies on sharing the limited system memory with the CPU. Now yes, it does share the RAM, but it also has its own dedicated tile memory for rendering, which actually works incredibly well. Here's an example of an unoptimized workflow, which requires the data to be copied back and forth multiple times from the system memory to the tile memory to finish rendering and processing. And this is an example of the workflow optimized for Apple Silicon. As you can see, the tile memory is able to handle this entire process by itself which greatly saves time and uses much less of the system's total RAM. And let me remind you, this is only possible because of Apple's unified memory architecture. Traditional x86 processors and GPUs are forced into copying the data back and forth in order to finish the process. So here's a practical example to help you better understand how the unified memory works. Imagine that there are two artists, one named CPU and one named GPU, both painting on a single canvas that's essentially a task or process that needs to be rendered or encoded. On a traditional x86 computer like the Razer Blade 15, the artists are sitting on opposite ends of a table, which let's say is called the RAM. The CPU does a bit of painting, then sets it down onto the table, essentially copying the data to the RAM, where the GPU picks it up and does its own part of the painting process before setting it back down onto the table for the CPU to pick up and finish the painting. But with Apple Silicon, because of the unified memory architecture, the CPU and GPU are essentially able to sit side by side, both being able to paint the canvas at the same exact time, or essentially working on the task without having to make multiple copies to the RAM, which greatly reduces the latency and the RAM usage. Now getting back to Apple's awesome tile memory, here's an unoptimized programmable blending task, and here it is with Apple's tile memory in action, saving system RAM usage. And here's yet another example that usually requires multi-pass rendering. Tile memory enables it to finish with just a single pass greatly reducing latency, saving RAM, and improving performance. And if you're wondering how all of this is possible, Apple's GPU cores in the M1 have multiple caches, like two dedicated L1s, the tile memory, and last level cache. So it can essentially turn an x86 base timeline like this, with multiple copies to the RAM, to this just one at the end. And now you can begin to understand how the M1 iMac was able to outperform a much more powerful computer in real world tasks, basically all due to excellent optimization. But wait, it gets even better with this brand new developer video that's fully focused on video rendering. First up, Apple reminds us that everything from the neural engine, the CPU, the GPU, and the media encoders can access the unified system memory simultaneously without having to copy data back and forth, like in the example of Blitz, which are essentially copies of data that are required on discrete GPUs like the RTX 3080, because the system RAM and VRAM are separate, and Blitz are usually required twice, from the CPU to the VRAM and then back, as you can see in this example. And now, here's an example of an optimized workflow on Apple's M1 chip. No Blitz at all allowing it to quickly move on to the next frame, which is only possible due to that unified memory architecture. Next up, we have this example, which basically shows that on traditional chips, every compute dispatch requires the RAM to sync the data globally before moving on to the next compute task putting a much heavier load on the RAM. But with Apple GPUs like the M1, the tile memory itself can sync the data and move on to the next compute task without touching the RAM at all until it's ready for encoding, which greatly reduces RAM usage and latency. On top of that, Apple's GPUs support memoryless attachments where a resource only exists in the tile memory for the lifetime of the encoder, saving a bunch of RAM. And now getting into video editing tasks specifically, which commonly include things like unpacking the image channels, color space conversion, applying LUTs, 
color correction, effects, and packing the channel for output or exporting. This can usually be very RAM intensive because each step needs to be copied to and from the RAM, like in this example, which requires 2.16 gigabytes of memory traffic to process a single 4K frame through that complicated timeline. But with an Apple GPU's tile memory, it's able to handle many of those tasks without having to access the system RAM at all, which ends up reducing the memory bandwidth by a massive 62% per frame. And then on top of that, reducing it by 270 extra megabytes, thanks to only requiring one device buffer, as well as reducing cache thrashing. All of this ends up greatly improving the performance of timeline video playback while using less RAM. And that's why in one of our recent comparison videos, the M1 MacBook Air played at a perfect 24 FPS with decent overhead compared to the new Galaxy Book Pro, which played back at only around 12 FPS despite being not that much slower in terms of raw graphics performance. And then finally, finishing off with encoding or exporting files, Apple's unified memory architecture allows both the video encoders and the GPU to access the same data files on the RAM without having to copy it back and forth like traditional chips have to do greatly reducing latency, reducing RAM usage, and improving performance. And that is how the M1 iMac with only 16 gigs of memory was able to outperform the much more expensive Razer Blade that has double the RAM, a whopping 16 gigs of dedicated VRAM, and a much more powerful GPU. But it doesn't stop there. We tested the Razer Blade Studio with a Quadro GPU that's very similar to the RTX 3080, and the performance dropped by around 50% when unplugged in order to save battery life, which is something that doesn't happen on M1 MacBooks because they're so efficient. In fact, when we compared the 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro to the 16-inch Intel-based MacBook Pro, the battery life on the M1 was at 66% after three and a half hours of heavy performance testing, while the 16-inch was almost completely drained, which is absolutely insane. And that's all because with the new M1 Max, Apple is now the only company in the world that controls the software, the chip, and the actual computer all at the same time, allowing them to reach never before seen levels of optimization that are literally impossible for their competitors to reach. And what's disappointing about Windows 11 is that the code base is essentially the same, so all of those inefficiencies that stem from having to support a wide variety of outdated hardware are all still there needlessly slowing down every single computer that will run Windows 11 for years into the future. And meanwhile, Apple is continuing to push the envelope in terms of software optimizations to perfectly match their Apple Silicon hardware. Like for example, eliminating the need to copy data to the RAM while rendering ray tracing by doing everything within the tile memory. And here's another example from the developer video titled Optimize High-End Games for Apple GPUs. With Apple's unified memory architecture, you no longer need to use a Blitz encoder to copy game rendering data to a private buffer, since both the CPU and GPU can work on it at the same time, improving performance. So due to optimizations like this, Apple's very first and weakest Apple Silicon M1 chip is already outperforming much more powerful laptops in real world tasks. And that is why even longtime Windows users are finally switching to M1 Max because of the incredible performance, efficiency, and bang for the buck that's ironically better than recent premium Windows laptops. So here's an interesting thought. If these M1 Macs are performing this well, imagine what's gonna happen when Apple's much more powerful M1X Macs are released. It'll literally be a computing revolution, with everyone, including Windows laptop makers, getting their minds blown by the value and performance of the upcoming M1X Max. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, go ahead and click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. Definitely check out one of those two videos right there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.